beginning international genealogical research. If you've ever been approached by someone wanting you to help them find their ancestors in a foreign country, or maybe you are just wanting to find your own ancestors in a foreign country, you might be looking for the panic button instead. Foreign countries can be a little intimidating if you haven't had experience. Hopefully in the next few minutes we can ease the sting and all feel a little more confident in knowing where and how to search for those elusive ancestors internationally. Before you start your search, there is information you must gather here in the United States on your immigrant ancestors before you can cross the ocean. Full name, including maiden name if applicable, a birth, marriage, death, and a place of birth, even if just a country of origin for now. Don't forget to ask family members and even distant relatives about your ancestor's birthplace. You never know who may have personal knowledge on relevant records. You want to gather names of all identifiable relatives, spouse, parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and cousins, even neighbors found in the census records. Immigrants often traveled with friends and relatives or went to join one who had previously immigrated. Any other information that may help identify your ancestors, such as religion, occupation, friends, titles, witnesses, listed on documents. Sometimes you know the country, but you don't know the town or the county your ancestor was born in. This is actually a very important step to know before you attempt to cross the United States borders. You have to find some way to identify records of those ancestors here in America that may include the place of birth in that foreign country. That will make all the difference when researching internationally. So where do we find those records? Look at local biographies and town histories, published indexes, and genealogies. Don't forget family search books. I have found manuscripts about my family by putting in my surname in the search bar, and other suggested searches came up on the left. It was an online manuscript that told me the ship they came on and the general area of Ireland they came from. Don't forget to try wild cards in the spelling of a person's name. Check records related to the immigrant's death, such as death records, church records, obituaries, cemetery records, and probate records. Check both civil and church sources for a marriage record and records for that children's, for the children's births. Be aware Jewish or Mennonite births were occasionally recorded at Catholic parishes, especially in areas where the church was used as a civil registration office. Census and court records, land and property records, may reveal an ancestor's town of origin. Newspapers, land and property records may reveal an ancestor's town of origin. Uh, origin. Obituaries public in ethic newspapers are often the most likely place to contain information such as a town of origin. Passenger lists and naturalization records can be an important source in the search for an immigrant's town of birth. While it may seem a better place to start, you usually need the information found in the previous steps to enable you to locate immigration and naturalization records. Naturalization was a multi-year, multi-step process, and most applications have at least two documents. Declaration of intention may have been filed even if he didn't finish the process. Naturalization records before 1906 are not likely to give a town of origin or names of parents. Records after that are much better. Be sure to check the original record for additional information. Some of the records where you may can discover if they were naturalized are census records, court minutes, homestead records, passports, voting registers, and military papers. Check records in all jurisdictions that may have kept record on, records on your ancestor, including town, parish, county, state, and national lo uh, localities. Check for the complete time period or when he or she lived there and for some time after their death. Check these documents thoroughly, making note of their occupation or the names of their neighbors, godparents, and witnesses. If you are not successful through the previous steps, cast a wider net by searching the records of all known relatives. Church baptismal records for children of immigrant parents are another good resource. Immigrants often attended churches with others of their same ethnic and geographic background, and often a priest or minister who knew the family would record more specific information about them. 
Identify and verify the place on a map. Often you will find multiple places with the same name, or you may find the town has changed jurisdictions or even disappeared. It is important to correlate with historical maps and other resources of information to be sure you have identified the correct place. Challenges. Family surnames may have been changed for a variety of reasons. They often would spell it like it sounded rather than adhere to an exact spelling. Sometimes either the family or officials would anglicize foreign names to avoid discriminations. All this means to conduct your research carefully. It is important to know how international borders changed over the years. Germany, for instance, was just a region of kingdoms and principalities prior to unification in 1870. From 1870 to 1949, the borders of the country changed several times as a result of wars. They were incorporated into six other countries. You may have to check for records in more than one country before locating those that you need. Take advantage of Google to find a map at the time period you need. Privacy laws varied from country to country. United States has a 72-year privacy law for census records. Britain has a 100-year privacy law for census records. Not all countries have infrastructure. They may not have census records, for example, so you may have to do a little digging to find out what records were kept and where. Prepare yourself for any linguistic challenges. After you have identified a town or district, you are ready to cross the waters. The first place to look is the FamilySearch Wiki. You can find it in FamilySearch.org. It is under the Search tab. Type in any country, or you can click on the map to select it from there. Every country has a nice map. Here is Spain. Click on any part of the map to see records specific to the country or providence. All kinds of research tools, Spanish, genealogical, word lists, and so forth. On the far right, you can get research strategies, record finders, which tells you the time periods they kept marriage records or civil registers, or passenger lists, and so forth. Anything in blue is a direct link. You can go directly to the record types or learn about the country or see local research resources. Click here to go directly to Spain Online Records. Here is a partial list of what you might see, or you can join a Facebook page specifically for Spain, and it is in English in case you were wondering. Going on down the page, you can find many more direct links to providence, providences of Spain and other research helps. Don't be too afraid of language barriers. This is an online record from Slovakia cemeteries. Often you will get a tab like this that says, do you want to translate this record? Just click on translate and it is quickly transformed. Bear in mind some cities and county governments do not put their records online because it is a source of revenue for them. This goes for U.S. places also. If you aren't able to find your ancestor online and you think a place might have information on your ancestor, you may want to write them a letter to and provide return postage. Wiki gives you a step-by-step -step translation of a letter you may want to compose all the way from the address and introduction to the sincerely yours. There is more on down the page. On the left is the English version. On the right is the Polish translation. They even tell you how to transfer money. Wiki has thought of almost everything. While we are in Family Search, go to the catalog under the search tab. And over on the right is WorldCat. It is a worldwide library online. Click on this to learn more. Search for family history books, collections of family papers, and just about anything you can think of in print. You may find a library or repository close to your location with a copy of the book you need. Many are available for interlibrary loan. While you're in the library, type in a country. You will see a long list of databases you can choose from. Going to one of these databases, we will see this screen. Some of these will be online and you can click here to see them. If it is in a book, it will tell you what library it is in and the call number. If it's a film, you can click on this icon and you can order it. If you forgot how to order, you can click here on the blue order line uh, to get instructions. It will be shipped to a library near you and you can review it. Now go under the search tab and instead of wiki or catalog, click on records 
and choose a country by clicking on the map. I chose France. You will get this page. Over on the right, you can click on direct links to videos about researching in France and or you can see all the France courses in the Learning Center. They will also direct you to the Family Search Catalog or Wiki, which we have just talked about. Further down on this same page are unindexed records still in their original form. I will click on the top one. I could go directly to the collection of over 7,000 or I could click here on Learn More and it would take me to this page where it will tell me how to search unindexed records effectively in this particular record. So these are the three sites, Wiki, Catalog, and Records in Family Search that you can explore. Another place you might want to check out is the Family History Guide. Just Google this address. They have information similar to Family Search Wiki, but some of the information is different and worth taking a look at. This is a home page and you will want to click on Countries and Ethnic. Here is a partial list of what countries you can explore. I chose a sample page of the Netherlands just to show you what the pages look like. In the top green bar at the top are all the categories searchable in the Netherlands and all other countries would have similar resources. There is a section on research, census records, civil and vital records, and so forth. We are on maps and gazetteers. Anything in green is a direct link. On another section we see here how to use effective research methods for your Dutch ancestors and getting started with Dutch language and reading script. By clicking on an article, it will take you to many more articles and information to help us in our quest to learn more about the Netherlands. On the Get Help part, you can get links to join a Facebook, leave messages, or join Netherlands genealogy societies. So go check out the Family History Guide and just be familiar with what is available. You'll want to check out the different partner sites because they all use different search engines. If you're in Ancestry.com, you can look at all the records from the search page. Go down to the map and you can click on UK, Ireland, Europe, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. I will choose Europe and I can go to any of these countries by clicking on them. Under a country, I pick Germany, and you will see different uh, databases holding thousands and millions of records. Click at the bottom of the list to see a complete list. On the right, you can narrow by smaller localities to view its unique collections. What you see out from most of the records are the dreaded words in German. Ancestry does not translate, but don't despair, most of the time it's not a problem. As you see here, part was translated, but if it wasn't, you can still do genealogy in a foreign language. Go to the address bar and type in translate.google.com. Google will translate all these languages. Google Translate will bring up a box like this. Make a list of all the genealogy terms you might come across. Birth, marriage, death, sister, brother, mother, father, so forth. Choose your language, which would be English on the left, and type in a word. Then on the right, choose a language you are wanting to translate, and your foreign word pops in. The above are just short samples of what you would see in Chinese, Mongolian, and Dutch. After I compiled my list of terms, I would print it out and tape it to the side of my computer as I referenced my foreign documents. In Ancestry.com, you can also get to foreign records by going into the card catalog from the search menu. Insert the country in the title box. You could put a state or town in the keyword box if you knew it. You can also sort how you want the records arranged. Default is having the most popular at the top. Be sure you choose your country here or you may get lots of results you don't need. Also, Ancestry tells you to use the name they went by in the country they lived instead of, say, the Americanized name. Here is a search page for Germany. Be sure you scroll down the page and read what it says about the record you are searching. There may be exclusions or information that would affect how you search. I wanted to bring your attention here to browse. There are tons of unindexed Italian as well as other languages uh, records that are not indexed. They will be sorted by date or place rather than name. In MyHeritage, you can click on the word research here at the top 
and click on the area you want to search. I will choose Europe. This will bring up a list of countries within that area. I will choose Belgium. I like to choose Advanced Search. You can also go here to explore other databases. Here are the results for Hans Schmidt. I will look at the top record just to show you what it looks like. This is under the Results tab. MyHeritage has over 40 languages and it does translate the record to English automatically. This area shows you the original. Use the wheel of your mouse to zoom in or out. You can also organize by summary. Also, this shows you the collections including some of the United States. You can search Family Trees in MyHeritage, Family Search Genie or the, or the Wiki Tree. Then down on the page to Belgium Birth, Marriage, Death, Records, and so forth. The list goes down further for more records. Find My Past is a great resource if you're trying to find ancestors in the United States, England, Ireland, Scotland, Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. They have over a thousand exclusive records that other sites don't have. Here are great places to learn about Irish, Australian, or British genealogy. Under their blog, there are lots of articles and videos to learn by. You can search all their records in A to Z records and narrow it down by subcategories. Or you can start searching under these categories in the United States and Canada. Here is a tip. I had a gentleman come in and wanted to enter his Chinese names into Family Tree. As you may know, they say their last name first. We say John Smith, they say Smith John. In Family Search, the given name is first and the surname is last. I was concerned about Family Search being able to find duplicates and the searching functions. So here how is how that problem is resolved. Anytime you go add a person in Family Tree, you have this box come up and in the upper right hand corner, you have the option of going into this template and changing it. Click on the down arrow and choose the language. In this case, it would be Chinese. Notice how the Chinese template on the left differs from the Portuguese template on the right. The Chinese template adapted and put the surname first. Type in the Chinese name at the bottom boxes fill in automatically with the Romanized name. It may take a few seconds longer to fill in. By Romanizing the name, it will improve the accuracy of the search results and the possible duplicates feature. So that's why you want to change this template for these particular languages. You can learn more about this by going into the Help Center and typing in the search bar, choosing a language template to enter names in Family Tree. Going on down this page, there is another article you may want to read called Entering Letters, Characters, Diacritics, and Accents Using an English Keyboard. It will tell you how to add a language to a version 7, 8, or 10 Windows computer and enter foreign characters that are not on your keyboard. And you can switch back and forth between languages. It is nice for people working in several different languages. Another tip, if you decide to try Google, go to your country of choice to get better results. So if I want to research in Germany, I would type in Germany in the search bar. It brings up the web address and the abbreviated code and then I can click on the web address here. When you're in that country, uh, then put your name or whatever information you want to search for. This is my ancestor that came up and it did provide some good information including a town of birth. If I knew which child I descended from, maybe it would be worth a try to come forward from my immigrant ancestor and try a search that way. Random Acts of Genealogical Kindness is an organization of volunteers who will perform lookups for individuals who do not have easy access to the records in their area. Their service is free, but you will have to pay for expenses such as photocopies and so forth. It was offline for a while, but it's the 4th of January 2015. It's back online and you can Google this title to get more information. Also by joining a genealogy society, Often local members of that society will do lookups for out-of-town researchers also. If you have a particular tough brick wall to solve, you may want to consider hiring a professional genealogist. Using a genealogist who belongs to the Association of Professional Genealogists might be a good thing to consider since they have to adhere to a certain code of ethics in their businesses. 
you can Google this title and get to their web page to learn more about their services. This concludes this presentation. It's so exciting when we finally connect with our ancestors across the borders of our own country. Hope this has been helpful and that we can all feel a little more confident in researching our ancestors across the world. Thanks for watching.